Detroit might be one of the most reliable sports towns in the United States of America. Bunch of cops, FBI, everyone there waiting. So then he would go bet on the Lakers to win by nine points because he knows Kobe Bryant's going to shoot 30 free throws tonight. The NFL would have to negotiate with the cartel. Uh, for sure. Wow, that'd be sick. I mean, the NFL is the cartel. Business is booming when Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are at the Super Bowl. You missed one hell of a time in Detroit at the draft, let me tell you. It was a sight to see. If you let me say, like, if you're if you're not from Detroit, if you've never been to Detroit, what a time to see Detroit. It was beautiful. Everyone was on their best behavior. Like it was something. They, they had almost eight hundred thousand people at the draft. Over the three days. I think sure. I think it was over the three days, but even the scene of the very first day, like out how many people were there. Listen, from the beginning, it's why I thought the Lions would win a playoff game was because they're hosting the draft. And even if the Lions sucked last year, that many people would have still have showed up. Just Detroit is a great sports town. Everybody's looking for the vibe. But the fact that the Lions were good and having the draft really was a great scene for Detroit. Obviously, I wasn't there. I didn't even see any videos yeah. besides that you showed me. But, I mean, it, 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 Detroit might be one of the most reliable sports towns in the United States of America. Yeah, it's it's there's there's what I like to call, you know, big markets, small markets, but then there's just like football towns, sports towns. Detroit is one of those. I mean, first day Goodell came out for the first pick and said that Detroit broke the record. So, for people that don't know, they have an area where you can go in where the draft is, right? Mm -hmm. At about 4 hours before the draft, it was completely closed off. You couldn't even go in there anymore. Why? Because there's it that was many at people. capacity. In the capacity, just first come, first serve. First come, first serve. You did have to download an app to do it. But basically, two hundred seventy-five thousand plus people were in draft night on the draft. Another ten million plus were watching live on TV. And for someone who did go to the draft, I will say it's cool to go to it one time. But I like watching the draft on TV because I want to see the highlights. I don't know all these guys. So when you see them, you're kind of like, after like the first five picks go, you're kind of like, who's his offense alignment for Alabama that I've never seen play yeah. before? I have no idea if he's good or not. But he looks pretty big. But I've there. always thought that even about going to sporting events, it's the best seat in the house is on TV. For sure. Because in commercials, you can go to the bathroom. The snacks are cheap. You don't got to fucking commute. You don't have to deal with any like crazy fans and some people like the atmosphere obviously like that is the like, atmosphere is great but that's yeah, the great draw, great atmosphere but that's the draw to any in-person thing is the atmosphere but like there is not a better seat in the house than watching it on tv it was pretty impressive you know and you like to see you like to hear the commentary and stuff like during the game they have like their own little commentary which you don't really see when you're on like when you watch on tv because you just see like pat mcafee and all the people yeah. talking but when you're there they have like two hosts that are like talking the whole time and everyone's just booing them. They're like, boo, get the fuck off of the stage, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But I do want to say like in between picks, in between picks. Host? Yeah, like they'll be like playing music. They'll be doing a bunch of shit in between picks. And it, everything is so delayed. And that's how you know it's like for TV and everything yeah. is because everything takes so long. Um, but I do want to say Detroit broke the record for most people at a draft ever and they blew it by over 80,000 people. The last one was in Nashville. They had 200,000 people, which 80,000 more people is a lot. And there would have been a lot more fucking people had they let them in the draft. Like, they capped it at 275. There would have been way more people. Like, when I saw the line, like, there was three or four different entrances you could get into the park. Did you in. get in? I got in, oh. which was crazy. They were at such capacity that they cut the park in half at one point, And we were on the half that wasn't in. And we were like, what the fuck? They had, like bunch of cops, FBI, everyone there waiting. And then eventually, I don't know if people just pushed the fence over and just were like, fuck it. And they were just kind of like, screw it, whatever. But we were already in the park and they were trying to like make people, they want people to go home. They were like, fuck, we need to kind of get rid of this. But FBI was there. It was, it was kind of crazy. But I do want to play a couple of clips. So Roger Goodell was on the Pat McAfee show talking about the draft. And I said to Zachary, after going to, attending the draft in Detroit, I said, 
Detroit will host another Super Bowl. They haven't hosted a Super Bowl since I think 2003 or it was something early 2000s they hosted one. We were super young. I think Detroit will host another Super Bowl for the the way they acted, the way the city was. Like it was beautiful. There's casinos, there's bars, there's live music. It's everything that you could want all in one area. Plus there was like Tigers games going on during it. So it was like there was so much to do while we were there. That's one of the best draws of Detroit is how every like how close everything yeah, is. Yeah, everything was close. You could walk everywhere. But I want to play this clip talking about how competitive the uh, draft, like to host the draft, is just as competitive as the Super Bowl because not every team can host a Super Bowl. So are they selling you just like with Super Bowls, these yeah, cities? No, the bidding process for this, uh, actually there's almost as much demand for the draft as there is for the Super Bowl um, oh. because it's so many cities can't host the Super Bowl, but they can do the draft. But it's getting to the point now where the draft is, is it's not in the same league, but it's pretty darn close. Yeah. I wonder why some teams can't host the Super Bowl. I feel like if... I but There's a lot of reasons why. I so, know, it could be but, hotels. But no, 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 but like, it's, it's not I, even that. It's not even that. It's it, ha, it's it depends on the climate. And this is what I was talking to. Um, shout out to our boy Tip. I was Because I went to the draft with him. And I was talking about Super Bowls because there's actually a very, very, very tough selection to be hosted um, for the Super Bowl. So basically, the, the how it happens is, one, you have to be in a warm climate. So that is like the number one factor. You have to be in a warm climate. Yeah, because you don't want to fucking be playing New York it's all, in February. It's all corporate, right? And you don't want to be outside. Yeah. So if you aren't in a warm climate, you have to have a dome. So that's another reason why. And then there's a lot of other factors, but basically they, they, every year, because the Super Bowl is always a couple years ahead. So when they're going to pick the Super Bowl placement for that year, they send, the and this is what's crazy, the team, the city has to host 100 people from the NFL. They go, they have hotels, they, they they take them out in the town, they show them food, they're like, oh, this is all, they show them all the attractions, basically. And then 100 people will go to three different places, and they'll basically try it out and be like, hey, we like this one the best. This one will have the most effect. You know, so there's a lot of these things that go into it. It's not just like, oh, this is a great place to host. It's not that. It's not that. That's why a lot of these teams, I think, are going to a dome because it it puts them in play to do that. Obviously, hotels play a part. Obviously, all that stuff. But most of these cities can host a, a, a people. You know, they yeah. can host a million people. It's not that crazy. Besides Green Bay, Green Bay couldn't, and that's there's a lot of reasons why Green Bay can't though, because no one wants to be in Green Bay in fucking February or whenever they play the Super Bowl. Like no one wants that. So at the end of the day, yeah, Green Bay, historical place, will never host it until they dome it, literally. I think they're hosting next year's draft, I think. I don't could've know. Saw, I, I could have so swore I saw somebody who was like the ex-Green Bay Packers GM that kind of is like the Twitter analysis on the inside of the NFL said something about how they're probably going to host it next they year. They might be. I think, which would be a great draft location. It would be. Listen, I don't... I, I don't think that you put the draft in like Miami or LA. No. Like it doesn't make sense. No one would give a fuck. Put it in a small market, even in New York. And I didn't play the clip, but Roger Goodell talks about how it used to be in New York. Um, and basically at the Hard Rock, they the Hard Rock kicked them out, and that's why they went on the road. And they were already thinking like, ah, it's already like they they thought they could expand yeah. because it's such a small location. It's like when you put it in a place like Detroit, you're like, why would we ever go anywhere else? Like the amount of space it was, that's why I was saying that they could fit so many people. That's why they broke the record. The area was yeah. massive, and you can't get that in a in a, another place. But even if you do put it in L.A., no one gives a fuck. Yeah, there's other things going on. This is Detroit Super Bowl. This is a playoff game. There, this is how big there, it is. There, a lot of way, and this is why the NFL obviously just dominates and wins and market share and everything is the best thing they could do with the draft is going to places that. Not even would never host the Super Bowl because I think as it adapts and everybody who builds a new stadium is going to have the retractable roof. So like everybody's going to be able to host a Super Bowl, but you can tap markets that you never would before. Detroit, draft. Green Bay, draft. You know, insert other location, fucking Houston, you know, whatever it is like where you'll actually get a draw, but you nailed it on the head. LA, Miami, you could probably maybe do Chicago, but like LA, Miami, Vegas, should never host a draft because there's Vegas, just too much. Air. See, Vegas, you could maybe get could. away with. I, Vegas, you could get away with it because there's so many sports fans in the gambling, and right. everybody's already going there. And I retract that statement, but like really specifically thinking about like Miami, LA, avoid because there's just so much going on. I already. think I think what it comes down to is the draft 
is for the fans and the Super Bowl is for corporations. And I think that is where the difference is. Like when you talk about the Super Bowl, no one who is a fan of their team can attend the Super Bowl. It's a fact. Like, look at who goes to the Super Bowl. It's every corporation, every business guy, a bunch of people that are rich as fuck, they, they go to the game. Like, if you're an average Joe, like, we would have had to, if, we, if, the, if the Detroit Lions went to the Super Bowl this year, we would have had to drain our bank accounts to even get a sliver in there. And that would have been us, like, sleeping on the sidewalk. Like, that's how it is, especially in Vegas. Like, in Vegas, like, that's a different tier. Miami, a different tier of money, a different tier of wealth. And that's why it's cool when the Super Bowl's in those locations. But the draft, put that bitch in Columbus, Ohio, you know, Cleveland, Ohio, sorry, Cleveland, Ohio, where you can get a fucking glizzy for a dollar. And, like, but people are going to be just Cleveland having a time. Cleveland be a great place for be it. be a great place. A little dirty watered hot dog. Exactly. But I think it's interesting as we, as we transition to the next clip where – Goodell is actually talking about how much the NFL wants to expand to the international game, which to me seems like a no brainer in a sense. Like you look at like soccer, cricket, all these other sports that are fucking massive, even cycling. Cycling has more views than like the, the tour de France gets three times the views in the Super Bowl gets like, that's a lot. Uh, who would have thought, right? So he, this is what Roger yeah, Goodell said. It, it, before we get into the clip, it, it's the barrier of entry. To play football, you need 11 people on one team, times two essentially, so 22 people. Then you need the equipment. Then you need the field. Then you need the football. Then you coach it. Like, For there's sure. so much more that goes into it than like, but I, I need a that, bicycle to ride around. But I think that yes and no. I think that yes from the start, having all the equipment is a, is a, is a barrier, but – you can throw a football on the ground and people can go run around on the on the grass and play football. Like it's not legitimate, but you can still get a love for the game and do these things. Agreed. So this is what Roger Goodell said about the international game. We really do believe we can be good global sport. So I see us playing uh, at least 16 games on the road at some point in time. Okay. And on an international market. That may be 10 years out. But I see us getting there at some point. Will a franchise ever happen or a division? Maybe. I think that's beyond 10 years. So. Yeah, that's going to be really that's tough, a, right? Logistically? It's got a lot of challenges competitively. The logistics, I think we can solve. The competitive side, you get to a Sunday night at the end of the regular season, you say, okay, Seattle, you're going to London. That's a rough one. That's a 12-hour yeah. flight. Yeah. Yeah. You might as well be going one. to yeah. Asia or whatever in the middle of the season. I'm curious what markets they would try to, like, tap into coming from pat because like pat played in the nfl like i mean you know great punter he's like you might as well just be flying to asia like what's the difference between a 12 hour flight and an 18 hour flight not a lot in no. the sense of like your pete like it's all private jet like it's all gonna suck it doesn't matter um i don't know and, and i think that's why roger said like they're going to south america this year they're gonna go to mexico city like I think well, it they, makes they've been doing the Mexico City and London because that's, it, been a, that's been because a it makes thing. sense. Like yeah. Mexico City, truthfully, could have a team. Yeah, very much. So. That does not make that's that's not that far off to me. I wouldn't want to be there as a player, but yeah, yeah, you wouldn't want to be there as a player. But you know, the average person, the average person in Mexico makes five thousand U.S. dollars. Imagine bringing home forty million dollars a year and living in Mexico. They might. Yeah, but the cartel would be knocking on your door. Like, What's up, brother? No, no, no. You'd be you'd be paying the cartel to fucking have your back. Is what you'd be like for the, sure. You'd the have NF, to. Though. The NFL would have to negotiate with the cartel. Uh, for wow, sure. Wow, that'd be sick. I mean, the NFL is the cartel. The NFL, dude. Literally, the NFL is the cartel because at the draft, like I said, they would they like they weren't even trying to hide the FBI and shit there. No. Like, and that's all I could think about was if they have the FBI just out and about, big trucks, massive guns, like just walking around. I'm like, I was watching. I'm like, bro, there's got to be some dudes like in the crowd here, oh, just like planted. Oh, planted for sure. That's why I was like, is it like the single person? Is like you know this little group over here? You know, is it the the family, fake family over here? I don't know. Like, yeah. it kind of made me think. I was like, damn. Like the NFL is that deep, and obviously, anytime you have that big, like that large of a gathering, like obviously, I want protection. Yeah. I want protection. Like anything could happen, and that's why I think they were scrambling a little bit because they were like, "Holy fuck! If something were to happen, like a riot, we can't stop this." Like there, there's a hundred to one people to yeah. you know, law enforcement. Like it's it's just real. I mean, the bullets hurt. The bullets would hurt. The bullets would hurt. Let me tell you, 
I just love my favorite thing is the horses when when the cops get on the horses and they're just shitting all over the floor and people got to walk through it and stuff and I'm just like oh dude it's like like huge massive shits and it's crowds like, dude. it's like walking on the New York sidewalk yeah and pretty much just the shit's <laughs> pretty, not as big pretty fucking much but I don't know I think it's not that crazy when got what Goodell said about 16 games out of I think that's like I said what they're gonna do is they're just gonna add a game because your rebuttal earlier to me when I said that was oh well. Detroit Lions, they sell out when they're even suck, right? And yeah. they don't want to give up any home games. But to me, if you keep watching that clip further, Goodell talks about how they want to shorten the preseason again and add another yeah. game. So if they're adding another regular and, season and game... And just like, hey, we're giving yes. you a bonus game, but it's yes. 100% on the because road. Because they're, like like, they're still making money when I they agree. go on the road. And you're getting the attention. I'm just, I'm more so curious what markets they would hit outside of London and Mexico City, like in their head. Like, they're going where to South they America. Go? They're going to like Brazil this year. They're going to like... Um, I, I forget what stadium. I, I don't know. I don't want to say Argentina, but I think they do have an Argentina game coming up in a year or two. Like there are a lot of these markets that I just think people don't even know what football is. Yeah. And I think once they see it, they're going to be like, holy fuck. And that's it, why you need to send your good teams there because it's it's like you have to have that I'm, good show. I'm curious. They're probably attacking it as who has the biggest soccer fans because they'll pull up to a football game. Like the U.S. draws eyes no matter what. Like everybody's paying attention to us, especially in South America. I mean, yeah, if they do like Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, like whatever that is, I mean, they're going to sell out no matter where. I just at. wonder if like the NFL – they have to like change their prices when they go to a new market in the sense because like, oh, I feel sure. like other markets can't afford the, no, the prices no, they're, that they would be they're, able to do. They're changing it for sure. Because and I, the thing with that is the country is probably paying them yeah. to do it. Oh, a hundred percent. Well, it makes a lot of sense, right? There's a lot of there's a lot of benefits that go along with it. It's like anything. People might want to travel to that game just to well, like people go are to gonna that. travel that exactly, game. Exactly, exactly. Which kind of like leads me into my next thing as these as the game gets moved, you know, one thing that we always talk about is like the influence on the game, right? Like, are these games being influenced? Is there something? And now we talk about this all the time. Do I directly think that Roger Goodell's being like, hey, this team's winning, this team's winning, they're gonna meet in the finals? No, I don't think that at all. But I think a lot of things are planted and then people themselves will build the plan. Like the NFL, like you said, they're the cartel, they're the FBI, they're the CIA. Like, they know how humans behave. They know how people are going to react to certain things. Of course. It's like all you have to do is plant a seed, and then things are going to keep rolling. But I think Goodell, he, it's a very short clip, but this is what Goodell talks about with Pat McAfee on are these games being influenced. The NFL is the WWE. Us as former players, the same thing. Whenever you uh, gave a season-long ban to Calvin Ridley, I think, there's a lot of people comparing that to like other punishments that have taken place. It's like that one, everybody that's involved with football understands, if we mess this up, it messes the whole. The integrity of the game cannot ever be questioned, even though it always will be because of the outcomes of sport and why sport is so awesome is because anything can happen. But like, if there's any proven shit like that, it can ruin everything. And obviously we all understand that. Without question, if people think there's an influence on the game other than the players on that field, we're in trouble. Yep. Well, Taylor Swift, we know. Yeah, yeah of course. Well, that's a different kind of influence. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the games are 100% influenced. And this is what I've always said. It's a business. So it it's a business. Be. It's the WWE. But this is the thing I've always said. You're still dealing with the best athletes and football players in the world. So it is the any given Sunday thing. Any team could beat anybody. But where I've always said, the refs have the ultimate influence. If you're throwing flags, a big play happens, you, you call it back. Or a big play doesn't happen. They throw a flag, pass interference. It's a spot file. It can be a 50-yard flag. That is That can change the game. But I've always rebuttaled that with the refs can't save an ass whooping. If one team is clearly better than the other person, they can't make it super obvious. They need no. to make it like, oh, bang, bang, play. It could go either way, flag or not, no flag. Like, But if the team's losing 40 to nothing, they're getting their breaks beat off. Yeah, I think that there's there's definitely influence. And I and I don't all these players are all assets of a business and not to be that guy, but like it's the same reason why Michael Jordan used to get bullied in his for early years and then the game changed where you couldn't touch him. It's because he was a valuable asset 
They wanted him to win. They don't want him to be hurt. They're selling more tickets with him on the floor than off the floor. Same reason why you can't touch a quarterback now in the NFL. But business is booming when Patrick Mahomes wins a fucking title. Business is booming when Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are at the Super Bowl. Business is booming. You know, no offense, but they don't care about the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like no. it's just a, it's just a reality. Like it, there's there's a difference. I'm not saying like they could never win. I'm not saying that like like I said, it's not a direct influence from Roger. But this is a way that they can do it, huh? You know, Patrick's been getting you know held or he's been getting roughed a little bit. Hey, it comes top down. Hey, this week because everything is week to week. Yeah. Oh, what are you what are you looking for this week? And they're gonna go. Hey, man, Patrick's been getting touched after the play too much. If he even gets touched, we're gonna throw it. Yeah. Boom. Or. You know, hey, you know, the guy on the edge, it, it, the holdings or whatever it is, like the holding on a player, like they were showing that the Kansas City Chiefs rarely get called for holding. That may be because they don't want Patrick Mahomes to get hurt. Yeah, 100%. Like, that's what it is. It, young Jamie, can you look something up? Can you search the NBA referee that, like, went to, like, federal prison for betting on basketball games? Because I have a rebuttal to that thing where you're talking about the weekly, um, like, the week-to-week plan. Donahue. Donahue. Anyways, so he came out after he got arrested. The, the, Timothy, Timothy Donahue. Timothy Donahue went to jail for however many years for betting on the games. And he wasn't like directly influencing games. Like people were like, oh, he was giving people technicals. And he literally came out after the fact. He's like, listen, this is what would happen. They'd be it they'd be refing Lakers versus whoever. Obviously, Kobe Bryant. Well, Phil Jackson for the last two weeks has been sending clips in to the NBA being like Kobe, every time he drives to the lane, he's getting hit, and you guys are not calling it. Yeah. Th- then it gets down, top down what you just said, week to week. Yeah. Then they would go into their plan and be like, anytime Kobe drives to the rack, if we're there's if he gets touches, we're calling it. Exactly. So then he would go bet on the Lakers to win by nine points because he knows Kobe Bryant's going to shoot 30 free throws and, and no offense, these are the elite of the elite. You know, if you're a right guard who is getting away with holding every fucking play, you think you're going to be like, oopsie. No, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna do this and see how far away I can get with it. You know, so I think that there is a lot to that. Obviously, Goodell's not gonna come out and say that, and he's gonna obviously there's no influence. Like the WWE doesn't even talk about it. It's just like a thing that no one talks about, yeah. but everyone knows. So again, I think one respect to Goodell because you know he was hired on in 2008 and or 2006, and since he's been hired on as the commissioner, the way that the NFL has elevated is incredible. And I know he gets a lot of shit and all this stuff, and everyone hates him. He is just the butt end of everything. Like He loves the booze because he's going, oh, thank you for the $70 million yeah, I made this you year. You could fucking boo me all you want. I was thinking, like, I think that he's going to retire one day and possibly just buy a team. Or he's going to be like the expansion team, and he's going to just buy it and then just like own it. And, and he just, probably you, has equity in the NFL to be like, yeah, honest. he probably does honestly because they give them a salary. But then, like, a salary is great, but the way the to be innovative is you have to have incentive to like really, really grow it. Seventy million dollars sure. is a great incentive, but like, if you get seventy million dollars plus you have five percent of the NFL, five percent on whatever the NFL is bringing in on a year to year basis is for sure a good chunk of money. Then yeah, he he's probably doing it, but. Yeah, he's obviously not going to come out and be like, yeah, the games are rigged, but they're definitely like heavily influenced. 100%. 100%. But if you made it this far, we appreciate you. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe, like it, and uh, let us know uh, what what you want us to hear in the future. We're going to start doing more deep dives, more clips, kind of more, more reactive. More substance. More substance. It's it's tough. You know, we're, we're obviously developing, developing this as we go. But um, we're definitely going to try to deep dive more. It's more of our wheelhouse, something we do more in our short form. So it makes more sense with our long form. We're going to try it out a little more. Until next time. I got to fuck with my bros. I got to stack out this gold. I tell you I'm on a roll. About to get all this dope. Ain't no fuck niggas know. I swear to God we the ghosts. This ain't the story they told. Man, if you know, then you know. I never had to tell my